something about you. Seeing yeah. into the future live. This is Rackspace's continuing coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. Now here's Robert Skoll. Hey, I'm Robert Scoble, and you're at TechCrunch Disrupt 2013, and we're talking with a lot of uh, innovators, people who are playing with Google Glass, and we're talking about where the future is going. This guy is building a, something of a Siri competitor, so we're talking about voice input and how that's going to be parsed and understood by devices like Google Glass or an Apple Watch or whatnot, and uh, we're going to get started right now. So. so who I'm, are you? I'm Brandon Wirtz. I'm the CTO of a company called Stremmer. Uh, we're based in Scottsdale, Arizona, and like you said, we make a competitor to Siri, or really we make a competitor to SRI that powers Siri. Uh, we have a natural language engine that's able to be put into numerous devices to give you more functionality and the ability to just talk to anything. Yeah. And so, what is the state of the art of voice response? Because uh, you know, when we talk to Siri, a lot of times Siri understands what we've said. You know, like you can ask it, how many people are checked in at TechCrunch Disrupt on Foursquare, and it'll probably parse that pretty well. But it has no clue, right? Because even though there is an answer on Foursquare, and even though uh, there is an API on Foursquare. It's not hooked up to Siri, and Siri just breaks and goes to Bing, right? Well, that's the that's the real challenge. Is that so? SRI is probably at the forefront of the consumer technologies for actually parsing what you've said, and Nuance that does the voice recognition is very good at doing the speech recognition part. But just because you know what all the words say doesn't mean you know what is going on or the context that the user is looking for. Yeah. So. Like you were saying, hooking up to a particular API for Eventbrite or Foursquare or whatever requires all of those hooks that Apple's missing right now. They just aren't wired into everybody. But also, they aren't really using the input from the device to get context. Yeah. So, you know, if I said to you, how long's the wait? You know, we can know that wait should be W-A-I-T. But if I said, what's the wait? That would also mean the same thing when we're in the context of a line, but if you're standing next to a fish, what's the weight isn't a measure of time, it's a measure of heaviness and it's spelled differently. Yeah. And so there's a lot of these parts of speech that are just missing right now because the things that we need for understanding language aren't available to the phone. Yeah. And those are the kinds of things that we're trying to solve. And at least on the phone, uh, with some of the apps you can text in the real answer and say, no, no, you didn't understand me. So we can fix the, the spelling problem, mm -hmm. but that still doesn't help uh, with that, with it not being hooked up to answers, right? Right, I mean, it's, it's like sitting in your college classes when you're totally out of your league. You can understand every word the professor said and still have no idea what this professor was talking about. And for phones, that's where they are right now. You know, Siri is only wired up to Wolfram Alpha, and that's about it. So you either have the things the phone can do, Wolfram Alpha, or the, let me see what I can turn up with a web search. And we think that if you turned up a web search, you failed. Yeah. I mean, it really is, unless you said, Google this, or search for this, you shouldn't end up at web search. Yeah. If I say, what is an aardvark? I should get a nice description that says, an aardvark is a small African, anteater type thing yeah. and get a real answer. So the first thing I want to do with these things is is just ask simple questions. Where's the closest beer to TechCrunch Disrupt or where to where I am? Mm -hmm. Where's the closest uh, Mexican restaurant? Where's the closest movie theater? You know, something's really crude, really straightforward. And it does somewhat okay, but it's not even really pleasing with that, right? No, and those are the things that right now people are using the, the most speech for. And yeah. it's very easy to, to send a text message and hope that it doesn't get garbled too much, setting up appointments, setting up reminders, and getting directions. But there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to have those same kind of conversations for all of our applications. Now, we were talking about you're wearing an alternative I'm, to Fitbit, but... Yeah. I'm wearing a sleep sensor from Fatigue Science just to learn what it's going to show me. A lot of athletes wear this to know that they're at, that they are or are not at peak performance. Yeah. 
and you, Sleep wise. <laughs> you and I are edge cases. We both have a Fitbit scale, so yeah. we can get on and update our Fitbit that way. Yeah. But there's no reason that my mom shouldn't be able to get out of the shower in the morning, step onto the scale, say her weight into the phone. I weigh 115 pounds and have that updated. You know, that should yeah. be that easy. But we don't do those things because it's not convenient. Yeah. And I well, think- Well, and it breaks too, too often. So you don't start to trust that the system's gonna work. You know, if, if, like I said, I, I've tried doing the, hey, uh, okay, okay, Google now, can you check me in on Foursquare at TechCrunch Disrupt? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, let's see if it even understands what we're gonna tell it, you know. But uh, let's keep talking. But Well, it, can you check me in on Foursquare at Tech Ridge? So it, it got halfway there. Well, yeah. and, and that becomes the other real problem is speech recognition isn't keeping up with the pace of the things that we're doing. If you want to search for a band that has a funny name, you're stuck. If you know you have a coworker, I have Angel Kojen, who is a coworker. There is no way to tell my phone to dial him because it doesn't have the the speech recognition. I get Angel or Angel if on a good day or on hell on a bad day, and so it won't do it. You know, two words, O-N, hell, is not going to match to on hell. And so we've had to build a whole bunch of stuff to just to fix what comes back from, from speech recognition because it's not there. Now, uh, iOS just had a big update, and so they now have a say your pronunciation of the word so that you can correct for names. But Google doesn't have that. Um, what are you going to do with Google Glass? Because you, you entered a wearable computer pr- contest. So, we think that this dialogue that you should be having with your phone would work very well on Google Glass on an ongoing basis. Things like, I'm out of milk, ought to bring up your Safeway account if you're here in the Bay Area, if you're in Seattle, your Amazon Fresh, and say, hey, you're out of milk. The last milk you ordered was Farm Fresh, blah, 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 and would you like to reorder it? Yes. Do you want it to send it now, or do you want it to just be added to your cart for the next order? Yeah. And you should be able to have that kind of dialogue. You know, the that senile-looking feel that we had when we all had Bluetooth in our in our ears. I think we ought to be having that with Google Glass. I mean, I'm not the Google Glass enthusiast that you are. I would rather be doing that with a watch with no display. But we think that that's a user preference thing. Yeah. So. With everything we do, we have a speech-only response, a speech with simple text response, and a speech with rich text response. So when you say, I weigh 115 pounds, it should say, okay, I updated your Fitbit. And if you're on you know, a watch. And then if it th- says updated your, uh, your Starbucks card, <laughs> you know that I didn't get it right. And you should be able to say, hey, that's not what I expected and have it fixed, you know? Yes, but if I have no display because I'm using something like a watch or just a headset, great, the voice feedback was enough. Yeah. If I'm on something like the Google Glass, I should be able to see possibly the graph of my weights. If I'm on a smart device with a touch input, I could tr- scroll through my weight, see what my target is, all of that rich stuff. And the experience would be the same for each of the commands, but based on the context of where you are, what you're doing, and what your device is, have the appropriate response. Now you talked a, a bit about contextually uh, bringing back the right answer. Are you using anything in the sensor? Because Google Glass is the first consumer device that knows where I'm aimed and where I'm looking. So far there's no API yet to really ask for those things from the glass, right, and constrain your searches. Right, so right now the only device that we're using, or the only sensor that we're using is the GPS. Yeah. And that's because we're starting with how do we work across the most devices, and everybody has GPS, even even a lot of the watches have GPS. Not everybody has those additional sensors that the Google Glass has. But you can get a lot, even just where you are. You know, when you say, directions to Springfield, or how far is Springfield, or what's the weather in Springfield, you know, there's 37 Springfields in the U.S. If I say Fremont when I'm sitting here, you and I think Fremont, California. 
But I grew up in, in Michigan on the southern border, very near Fremont, Indiana. To me, when someone says Fremont, that's the first place I think. But there's a Fremont, Michigan. So you don't just say all of Michigan gets yeah. Fremont, Michigan. We've had to figure out contextually where are you at and which one do you mean based on how big the place is, what your proximity to it is, and we'd really like to use some of that history data that says you graduated from this school forever after that school well, is. Not only that, I, TripIt and my, and my Google Calendar know my flights. So if I was flying to Michigan this, this Saturday, that probably, I, I might be looking for something in Fremont, Michigan, right? But right now, the world should know I'm in San Francisco and I'm not leaving anytime soon, so or not this week. So, if I'm asking about Fremont, it's probably Fremont, California, or Fremont Street in San Francisco, right? So, yeah. it should constrain much, much more closely to where you are. I want it to constrain to where I'm looking because I want to say, you know, where's the closest coffee shop that direction? Because that's the direction I'm walking at. You know, Jimmy Wales from Wikipedia just walked in, which is sort of funny. <laughs> uh -oh. You're right, Jack Rush, that's right. <laughs> but, you know, it's those kind of looking things are really hard problems that nobody's really starting to address because I oh, think. Oh, they are. I had a couple of guys on <laughs> today. What, with glass, it changes the world, but right now we don't have an API to play with. So you have to hack it and you have to sort of do some rocket science, right? Well, and we, none of us want to do rocket science unless there's a lot of money. Involved. I want to do rocket science. I mean, that's that's the real difference between us and everybody else is everybody else is limited to what there's an API for and what there's structured data for. We've built in enough of a system for understanding language yeah. that we can take unstructured and semi-structured data. So we have all of the CIA fact book, just as an example, as a reference. Anything that's in the CIA fact book, we decided the CIA is trustworthy in the data they provide about other countries, not yeah. necessarily the CIA is trustworthy. Just, and so if they have information about who the leader of a country is, we believe them. So if you ask any of the questions that can be answered by the CIA fact book, we'll get those right. Yeah. And we're starting to do that for other things. So we've got a neat little demo that you can say, why are puppies cute? And we'll go out and we'll look to the internet and we'll ask a whole bunch of questions and look at pages and say, okay, puppies are cute because it exhibits this baby-like response that is a in, uh, instinct into people. And it's actually parsing that out of various different pieces of internet data. Yeah. So we can do stuff with data that's not been structured, which is real rocket science because when you're talking about you know, Google Glass, you don't want to do a complex Google search, read through 75 pages of stuff. You just want to know. You want the answer. You want the answer. I mean, at my le at the basic level, I want to say, where's the closest beer? Next year, I want to say, where's the closest beer that direction? Because I'm heading that way to our car. And you know, I don't want to. I don't care about places that way because my car's that way, right? So I want to go that way, right? right. But. Um, but think about being able to say, okay, I've picked the beer place, yeah. and then be able to say, when is happy hour at that beer place? Right. Something that isn't in that structured data that has to come off of that company's website that may be updated daily, weekly, whatever, and be able to get those kind of responses. So is that considered artificial intelligence, machine learning, or is that something different? So we've gone out of our way to avoid some of the artificial yeah. intelligence and machine learning, because the problem is you have to know what you want in order to train the system. Yeah. And you've got to provide it a whole bunch of questions and answers, and you've got to have this large user base. So what we do is instead say, what rules can we extract from a bunch of data? And we throw the computer at it, and we say, Here's what we've got. Now let's see what things we can make happen. It's a really tough problem. How long do you think it's going to be? I mean, Google Glass gives me a little taste of voice. First of all, the first eight commands really work all the time because they're hard coded. You have to say, OK, Glass, take a picture. If you say, take a photo, it doesn't quite work. So you have to really say the entire phrase. And when you do that, the accuracy level goes up to 100%, right? Right, and that stuff's easy. You know, Our thought is that you should be able to say any command in the way that's natural to you. Yeah. There's, there's no reason that you should say, shouldn't be able to say, grab a pic if, you know, for, for take a picture. I mean, that's not the way you or I would probably say it, yeah. or 
you know. Shoot a picture. Shoot a picture, shoot a photo, take a photo, yeah. you know, all out of work. Same with, you know, text messaging. You know, why can't I say, send an SMS, shoot a message to, let Robert know, tell Robert. You know, any of those ought to work. And the order shouldn't matter too much. If I want to say, I'm running late, let Robert know, it ought to be able to figure out that what you really want to do is send a text message to Robert that says, I'm running late. And have a link to Glimpse so I can actually watch your uh, your map icon come toward me, right? <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's all of that stuff, but yeah. it, it's... By it's, the way, that's something, I have a Moto X and it listens to me, but it can't do multiple commands at one shot. In other words, if you say, you know, you can't say, look up the temperature and put that into a Facebook status message and then, you know, from there, uh, you know, send it to to Drew as well. You know, we won't so. have that in version one, but we yeah. definitely, it's something that we've planned for in our system that you should be able to do things like send Robert the results of the 49ers game. Yeah. And it would then take the results of the 49ers game and send it to you. As a, because it really ought to be anything that you could tell your assistant, your secretary, whatever the appropriate word is these days, you ought to be able to do with with your phone. Yeah. So, so it sounds like we're really five to seven, ten years away from that voice being perfect, right? Um, three. Three? Um, well, perfect <laughs> enough, because it'll never be perfect, perfect, right? The, it, the, it, the, it'll be wrong. I think for people who are English as a first language speakers, like you and I, um, who are semi-college educated and speak well, I think we're looking at about three years. We should be able to have things working very well. Um, it gets very hard when I hand my phone to a six-year-old you know, and have them play with our voice assistant because they come up with... Which voice recognizer are you using, are you using Nuance? We, we, or use, using? we use whichever one's in the device. Ah. Um, okay. Because that's easiest. So that's Windows phones, Microsofts, yep. Android is Google, Google's and, and Apple's is App. Well, Apple's is App Nuance right now. Apple doesn't have an API, so we can do some stuff with Nuance on their stuff. But yeah. um, it's really interesting to watch what Winmo gets right and what Android gets right, and how they differ on on things. Um, right now, the state of the industry is such that if you that going back to that I weigh seventy two pounds. On Winmo, you could very easily end up with I W A Y, seventy-two British pounds, with the with the little L symbol. <laughs> That's um, frustrating as a developer because you have to. It's a new API. You really have to understand, and you have to parse on all the platforms and know what it's doing. And and they're updating all of them constantly. Yeah. So what's broken one day may work one day, or what's working one day may be broken the next day. Um, we had a meeting with Huawei, the Chinese cell phone manufacturer. And the whole week before we went in, you could say, what's happening with Huawei? And the phone would get it right, we'd get this nice response that was the latest news about them. We thought, this is awesome. Went into the meeting that day, we'd say, what's happening with Huawei? And it'd be, what's happening with what way? What's happening with whose way? What's happening? And they're like, no, you were working. Why did you change? <laughs> Where do we uh, learn about you? Um, Strummer.com. It's spelled weird. It's, well, S-T-R-E-M-O-R.com. Uh, the objects that you can play with the most are at tldrstuff.com. We have a summarization API very similar to Sumly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming out and talking yeah. to me about what the future of these uh, voice assistants are. We're going to be uh, doing this all day long, or actually for the next three days, so come back in uh, 45 minutes or so, and we're going to have another one. Thank you very much. See you from Tech Night. Seeing into the future live. Rackspace's continuous coverage from TechCrunch Disrupt 2013 shall continue in a moment. Build your cloud to fit your application. Find out more at rackspace.com.